It's been 60 years since the first African-American men joined the Atlanta Fire Department. In this Black History Month special, Fox Rise Denise Dillon tells us about the men and women who made it possible. The first African-American firefighters say it wasn't always easy. In fact, they faced a lot of challenges, but they knew they were opening the doors to the fire department for many who would follow in their footsteps. This is a picture of the original black firemen. Uh, 60 years ago, the first African-American men were hired by the Atlanta Fire Department. Well, that was more of a prestigious job, you know, and so uh, uh, I decided I tried for it. Emmett Smith was one of the original 16. It was the peak of the civil rights movement. City leaders were under fire to hire African-American firefighters. Uh, I was uh, superiors, didn't know exactly how we would perform under, you know, uh, uh, actual fire conditions. All were assigned to Fire Station 16. Smith knew it would be a trial by fire. We had to meet with other firefighters and some of the firefighters, you know, that didn't necessarily want to uh, fight fire with us simply because we were black and they were white. Smith says they also met with resistance from the public. Black firefighters went in the uh, white neighborhood and they were a bit reluctant, you know, to have the black firefighters there because they figured that they were not going to do the job. Smith says over time they proved themselves. That was something I was proud of. These guys here, the first 16 here, I can't say enough about them. In 1977, the first women were hired by the department. All of them were black. The original seven. The elite seven, I should say. Liz Summers says some of the original 16 men were their instructors in recruit school. If it hadn't been for them, we wouldn't have made it. She says she was proud to be a firefighter, but often fought adversity. By being vocal and fighting and fighting for others, it made my job very difficult. She hung in there, and 10 years later, her son, Irving Reese, joined the department. Jet as the first mother and son team in the country at that time. She was the first woman to join the international National Association of Black Professional Firefighters and served as president of the local chapter. She worked her way up the ladder to the rank of battalion chief. I want to leave a legacy. I want to say that, okay, I'd made it possible for so many other people. Retired fire captain Michael McWhorter fought fires alongside many of the original 16, experiencing firsthand what they went through. I was told by guys I worked with on my shift that blacks were not cut from the same mold as whites were to be professional firefighters. He was president of a special interest group that looked out for the needs of African-American firefighters. They monitored hiring, promotions, and discipline, and fought for equality. When it was dinner time, blacks were not permitted to eat out of the same utensils as whites. He has watched how things have changed over the decades. Things uh, turned for the better over the years, and I'm proud of every one of them for that stayed here, that endured. Today, there is a plaque outside Station 16, honoring the 16 men and seven women who blazed a trail for others. It's like uh, paving the way for somebody else. Uh, we, we went and we, uh, suffered the consequences that we had to in order to make way for somebody else. It was it's been 60 years. Many black firefighters have been through the department since then, and a course made much smoother thanks to the brave and determined men and women who went first. In Atlanta, Denise Stillen, Fox 5 News.